The Kim Trump Summit live from uh, Singapore. This is BR on the World uh, on the 11th of June 2018. This will be across all of our outlets, uh, Boston Red on the World and the Boston Red Outlet uh, Network. And it will be on uh, the usual outlets, iHeart, etc., Spreaker, Snitcher, YouTube, uh, and whatever else. We are reporting live, and we are appreciative of the Singapore uh, newspaper here. And the latest update um, from uh, the uh, Straits uh, Times. uh, And the news keep coming in here. Um, Let me get the first uh, bulletin up here. It was just in. uh, The president of the U.S., uh, D.J. Trump, according to a White House issued statement, it will uh, have a press conference as tomorrow be on Tuesday after the summit and leave uh, for the U.S. at 8 p.m. The uh, leader of the Democratic Republic of uh, Korea, uh, Field Marshal uh, Kim, is set uh, for a tour, uh, uh, a city tour. The uh, Straits uh, Times understands the uh, leader uh, We'll uh, be doing a uh, mini uh, city uh, tour uh, tonight. Amongst the expected uh, stops along the way are the Marine Bay uh, Sands, the Sky uh, Park, and uh, the Expodia. Not sure what that is, but those are some of the places uh, that he will be uh, visiting. This is a big thing here, the Straits uh, Times. This is from uh, Singapore, and we're looking at the uh, summit, historic summit, be on uh, June the 12th. We didn't know exactly when we would start uh, the actual uh, coverage here, but uh, we moved a little bit uh, quicker than uh, perhaps we uh, thought we would. uh, And... Uh, let's see if we can get um, some of the uh, live information here uh, from, and here we go. 우리 당과 국가 군대의 최고 령도자 김정은 동지께서 미 합중국 대통령과의 역사적인 첫 상봉과 회담을 위하여 평양을 출발하셨습니다. The, uh, 조선노동당 위원장이시며 조선민주주의인민공화국 국무위원회 위원장이시며 조선인민군 최고사령관이신 우리 당과 국가 군대의 최고령도자 김정은 동지께서 anyway, uh, 조미순의 상봉과 회담이 개최되는 싱가포르 공화국을 방문하시기 위하여 and, uh, 10일 오전 중국 전용기로 평양을 출발하셨습니다. Uh, 종이하는 uh, 최고령도자 and, uh, 동지와 도날드 uh, 제이 트럼프 미 합중국 대통령 사이의 역사적인 첫 상봉과 회담이 6월 12일 오전 싱가포르 공화국에서 진행되게 됩니다. 경의하는 최고 령도자 동지를 조선노동당 중앙위원회 정치국 위원이며 당 중앙위원회 부위원장들인 김영철 동지, 리수영. This is a a first for you, and let's go back here. As we cover this uh, live, uh, basically speaking here, as the summit uh, moves on, uh, and I'll see if uh, get her name here. Uh, she is 75 years old, and her name is Chu He, and she has been a presenter as a uh, tournament in the Democratic Republic of uh, Korea. She's been around a very, very uh, long uh, time here. And KCTV's uh, report here, I... Okay, this is... <laughs> she has returned. Anyway, uh, her name is Ri Chung Hee. She makes her return. She went into uh, retirement um 
in 2012. She is uh, 75 years old. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can find other things here that... Uh, Audio uh, clips here. Um, the I'm not sure if we can get this. Is uh, you hear the arrival here of uh, the uh, Korean delegation? And unfortunately, I think this is all you will hear. Their arrival here. People taking uh, pictures and what have you. We put this on our This is the Prime Minister of the Moon meeting uh, DJ Trump. I apologize, you know, you can hear the promotion here, people are walking around, there's always plenty of walking around, the door is closed, so, yeah. I thought there would be a, uh, a news conference here, but uh, there is, uh, was no uh, news conference at all um, of this uh, of this move, uh, meeting the Straits Times here. We'll see what else uh, we have. Uh, wait a minute here. Get uh, online access to Straits Times. Oh, I see. Uh, this is. Singapore is uh, two dailies, and, and didn't know that uh, the Straits Time is one, and uh, Ziba is the other one, uh, full of comprehensive uh, coverage of these uh, two events. And we had not uh, looked at this particular one, and oh, I see. It's a Chinese newspaper, so that's the reason. This is the English language uh, paper here. And we'll have to stick with it, or we'll be in, as they say, a deep uh, trouble. Uh, but we will put a link here. Uh, these are Samsung Galaxy 59, the smartphone. Oh, well, anyway, we'll be giving away as a lucky drawings. I, I don't suppose that would be out here uh, in the states. Um, Limited uh, time free access will be, allow readers uh, to read uh, non summit related articles also. So, these are the major uh, newspapers in uh, Singapore and the Japanese uh, newspaper here also uh, is uh, one of the major uh, papers. And I'm not it all certain the Chinese. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Japanese. Don't offend anyone here. Um, the summit is being uh, presented, uh, and there is a very large uh, Chinese uh, population in uh, Hong Kong. And I think this. Is <laughs> This could have been our intro uh, here, and uh, we'll uh, put this on the uh, Facebook uh, page. And, and what we'll do now, we'll go to some of the other coverage here. We like to use uh, the uh, first source uh, type of material is normally the way uh, we proceed. We'll look at what the BBC has uh, to offer this morning. 
The, the BBC has been is usually much better in their coverage than they are here. Um, and this is basically about the failed summit in uh, in Toronto, Canada. This is uh, from the BBC. Uh, the U.S. will offer unique uh, security guarantees. That is, Papeo, the uh, CIA director here, uh, speaking ahead of the uh, summit in uh, Singapore. Mr. Papeo, Papi Papeo, uh, said preliminary talks. Uh, they've been talking about uh, preliminary talks uh, for some uh, time. As uh, from DJ Trump. Uh, Great to be in Singapore. Excitement in the air. That was his uh, tweet here. And not certain. Uh, from the BBC, how did we get here? Well, get much into that. But what Mr. Uh, Kim uh has said he wanted to focus on a building of the uh, Democratic Republic's economy. And that is his uh, mission. He's talking about economics here, a different uh, situation, period. And this is some... Rocket Man, little Rocket Man, he is a sick puppy. Donald Trump has called Kim Jong-un lots of colorful names in the past, but now they've patched things up and meeting in person. I think we're going to have a relationship and it'll start on June 12th. Why should this guy call this guy? It's a bit more complicated than you think. First of all, Kim Jong-un has many official titles. They're actually respected comrade Kim Jong-un, chairman of the Workers' Party of Korea, supreme commander of the Korean People's Army, chairman of the State Affairs Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Phew! So there has to be an easier way to address Kim, and the U.S. has struggled to find one. There was the coin that called Kim Supreme Leader, and one time Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called him Chairman Un. It's a bit different with Donald Trump. In the past, he called Kim just by using his name, but as the two got friendlier, Trump started calling Kim His Excellency and Chairman. We're meeting with the chairman on uh, June 12th. By calling him Chairman Kim, the U.S. is recognizing that Kim Jong-un is the head of the ruling party in North Korea. That's also what South Korea's president Moon Jae-in calls him. Kim Jong-un 위원장과 나는. But it's not without controversy too. Calling Kim Jong-un Chairman and His Excellency basically gives him something he badly wants. Legitimacy and recognition. And some are asking, should we be giving that to a man who's heading an authoritarian regime accused of human rights abuses and just months ago threatened to start a nuclear war with the US? Others believe that the US and South Korea need to show respect and treat Kim as an equal to get him to the bargaining table. But Donald Trump isn't exactly someone who sticks to his script, so will he this time? We'll soon find out. Interesting little uh, piece here from the, the BBC, and it, it's sort of uh, where it is. Uh, the other key story, obviously, is DJ Trump lashes out at his uh, allies. Well, that particular situation is that uh, it doesn't uh, matter uh, what uh, the so-called allies here. That was a failed uh, summit. And let me just get a little take from the BBC here on what basically uh, happened at this uh, summit. And this is the uh, G7, and not sure. There's a uh, special place in hell for any foreign leader 
that engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Donald J. Trump and then tries to stab him in the back on the this way out the Peter door. Navarro. And that's what he bad is, uh, faith uh, Justin Trudeau did with the, that uh, stunt White press House, conference. That's what weak, dishonest Justin Trudeau did. And that comes right from Air Force One. And I'll tell you this, to my friends in Canada, that was one of the worst political miscalculations of a Canadian leader in modern Canadian history. All Justin Trudeau had to do was take the win. President Trump did the courtesy to Justin Trudeau to travel up to Quebec for that summit. He had other things, bigger things on his plate in Singapore, where you are now, Chris. He did him a favor, and he was even willing to sign that socialist communique. And what did Trudeau did do as soon as, as soon as the plane took off from Canadian airspace? Trudeau stuck our president in the back. Oh, that's an interesting uh, point of view there uh, from uh, one of uh, D.J. Trump's uh, followers. And uh, basically, sorry, uh, we can't let our friends, uh, we cannot let our friends and enemies take advantage of us on trade anymore. And this was uh, Mr. Trudeau. I... Uh told the president that we would be uh, moving forward with retaliatory equivalent tariffs as of July 1st, and uh, he expressed to me that he thought that would be a mistake. Uh, and I certainly uh, agree that it's not something that we want to do. We do not want to harm American workers. We do not want to uh, harm trade between Canada and the United States. But the administration's choice to impose illegal and unacceptable tariffs uh, illegitimate and unacceptable tariffs uh, to uh, Canadian steel workers and auto workers and on the Canadian economy must be ret- met with an ex- equivalent response. I don't want to hurt American workers. They're our neighbors, they're our friends. But my job is to stand up for Canadian workers, Canadian interests, and I will do that without flinching. That's what I explained to the President. So that was uh, the uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, was on a German uh, TV, uh, denounced uh, DJ Trump. We won't let ourselves be ripped off again and again. We, uh, we will them uh, to act too, she said, in reference to uh, the uh, tariffs. So this is basically where the U.S. Uh, and the G7 summit was left as we look uh, forward to the events uh, in uh, Singapore. And as far as the security guarantees, uh, we've uh, noted uh, before that the government's in direct proximity to the Korean Peninsula, i.e. Uh, China and the Russian Federation, are the most likely ones to guarantee the um, security of the Democratic Republic of Korea. The uh, U.S. being the odd person out. But there's a lot of territory to cover. These summits usually are more uh, pro forma. This one will be interesting. They will set uh, just with the translators. I think Regan did that with Gorbachev back in the 80s, if I recall correctly. And uh, sat there, and they will have their meeting uh, between the two. And other things have been worked out. This is a uh, long-held uh, situation. It's not something that uh, can be done in one day. As we wind this down, let's go quickly uh, to Reuters and head to the summit uh Trump stays positive, that's according to Reuters. Uh, That's an interesting situation on uh, Monday, the historic uh, summit. And he's praising uh, Kim Jong, Mr. Um, and at the same time, Mr. Um is praising him. uh, Mike uh, Pompeo, he's the... uh, Secretary of State, he was a CIA director, get him right here anyway. Multiple hats, before that he was in the Congress. They were offering a, a preview to uh, journalists on the evening summit. He said uh, it uh, could uh, uh, 
provide an unprecedented opportunity to change the trajectory of our uh, our relationship and bring about a peace and prosperity to Korea. Well, that would be uh, be good. Uh, it is a first step. It's something an uh, American president basically have never met with uh, Mr. Kim. Bill Clinton met after he was out of the White House, but not before it. Let's look at the Washington Post here while we have this up. Uh, It's basically with the uh, G7 summit. Uh, not a lot uh, here in uh, the uh, Washington Post, which is the official more or less Washington newspaper here. Uh, and it's basically what happens on Tuesday when they shake hands. Well... That in itself would be a photo op. It's when the work it really uh, gets uh, done. Uh, they're sat without advisors or uh, nuclear armed experts uh, in the room, and they'll have a conversation. Now, I don't know how much uh, Field Marshal Kim knows about nuclear weapons and disarmament, but DJ Trump knows very, very little uh, that we we know. So Trump and Kim uh, labored uh, Monday here at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. These are representatives there all over uh, the uh, the city. They are sort of scattered out. And we'll see what uh, comes of this. We thought we would update this. And we'll go back and uh, take one more look at the uh, Straits uh, Times. and uh, see what uh, their latest uh, is here. Uh, Something about historic uh, Supreme Court uh, table, uh, the conference table that once was used by the Singapore Chief uh, Justice will play a part in the summit. These are uh, items that are updated here very uh, quickly. They will sat around, I suppose, this table. Will only be two of them there. Um, uh, and we're pretty much up to date on uh, the uh, various uh, happenings uh, in and around uh, the uh, summit. On the WBRN, we'll be bringing uh, you updates uh, periodically on BR on the World and on the uh, Boston Red uh, Network where we cover international affairs. We thought we we would update you uh, on uh, this uh, very, very important uh, summit. This is uh, Boston Red. Good morning.